Yo, yo, yo. What up, YouTube? Bro Talk 1000. Back at y'all with another video. All right, man, real quick. Y'all know what to do, man. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Share my videos. Hit that subscribe button. And thanks for rocking with your boy once again. All right, let's get it in. So, apparently, man, I was watching this uh, video with... um. From Seconds Out, shout out to Radio Raheem, Seconds Out. Um, he did an interview with Eddie Hearn. And in the interview, uh, he talked about basically him offering. I mean, he talked about a lot of things, but the thing I want to talk about is he actually showed proof that he offered Jamal Charlo uh, a fight with uh, Demetrius Andre and Canelo Alvarez. Um, so, or maybe it was just Canelo. I think it was just Canelo. But um, apparently it was for a lucrative amount. It was a large amount, it seemed to be. Uh, they did not show any of the offer. And shout out to uh, Radio Raheem because... Uh, I think he does a hell of a job as a journalist, man. You know, he's very transparent. He asks the, the tough questions. He wanted, uh, he wanted to show the actual, you know, everything. He wanted to be as transparent as possible. But Eddie Hearn was like, "We can just block out the the number. You know, we not we can show you. I can show you the actual email." So they actually turned it around, got it on camera, and. Uh, Radio Raheem is a very reliable source. Once again, shout out to him. He's a very uh, reliable source when it comes to journalism, boxing journalism, and asking the tough questions and getting things done. So I don't have any reason to believe that he would uh, lie about, you know, the what he saw. And you know what I mean? Like, he seemed like he was being very transparent about it. But, you know, for conscious confidentiality purposes they're not going to show you know the actual number and shit like that out of respect and that's understandable but um apparently there was an offer made all right so now a lot of people a lot of people are gonna run crazy with this all right um and and i mean it, it is valid man it seems valid i mean at what point at what point do we start to question the motives of Jamal Charlo, you know, PBC and Al Heyman, right? But there are several, there's several ways that this can be interpreted. All right. I'm not just going to jump out there first and foremost and just assume that uh, Jamal is scared of Canelo, right? That's not what it is. I think he wants to fight. But you have to look at it like this, all right? PBC has the top fighters, man. You go to the PBC website. And you do this for yourself, all right? Go to the PBC website. Look at the list of all fighters, all right? You go to Golden Boy. You go to the list of all fighters. You go to the zone. You go to the list of all fighters. Go to top rank. Go to the list of all fighters. I just did this. Okay. And what you'll find out really quickly is that PBC has the names. PBC has the names. They have the marquee named fighters that are fighting each other. So it seems like Al Heyman is trying to monopolize boxing in a way. Yes, I think he is. I think he's trying to monopolize boxing because whatever he's doing, he's trying to keep the fighters, he's trying to keep those fights in-house. Now, do I necessarily agree with that? No, not really. But, I mean, he's doing what he needs, what, what, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. So you have an option to go with top rank. And by the way, top rank, when I was I went to their list of fighters, they they didn't even show the list of fighters. 
they they showed their top fighters. They showed like Terrence Crawford, uh, Dev, uh, Dev, not Devin Haney, um, Shakur, Shakur Stevenson, uh, Terrence Crawford, Lomachenko, you know, uh, Tyson Fury. They showed the top heavyweights. I mean, the top fighters, but they didn't show everybody. You know, you go to the to the website and it's like blank. Like you can't even look at like their stable of fighters because they don't have anybody. Everybody's on PBC. So I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that I agree with it. I want to see these fighters fight the best. But Eddie Eddie Hearn also said and, sh and showed in the email that it was it was uh, going to be just for like a one fight deal. You know what I mean? To where he didn't even have to, you know, sign a network deal and do this and that. So why Al Heyman would advise against this fight is beyond me. But moreover, why Jamal himself wouldn't accept this fight is beyond me. It's a mystery. But now let's look at it from a different perspective. All right. Uh, the pressure was real for Deontay Wilder to just take any old offer and go over there and fight Anthony Joshua, right? Yeah, just go ahead over there, man. You know, take take 25%, take 30%, take a flat rate of whatever, whatever, and go over there and fight Anthony Joshua, right? Sounds good. You know what I mean? Go ahead and get that unification out the way and then you become the cash cow. But now what happened because of the intelligence and because of the smart maneuvering, this is just an another way to look at it, people. You know what I mean? I, hey, I don't have a, a, a dog in this race. I'm just keeping it real. All right. From the smart maneuvering and business tactics, what happened was the, uh, Anthony Joshua lost, right? Even though he, he came back and, and avenged his loss, his stock dropped. Deontay Wilder's stock rose with the win against Luis Ortiz. And now we have to potentially be talking about 50-50 for that fight. And then there's rumors of the the fight being worth 100, uh, $150 million per fighter, $150 million each. In Saudi Arabia. I mean, now this is what Al Heyman is doing, bro. This is what he does. This is why people rock with Al Heyman. This is why people mess with the PBC. This is why Manny Pacquiao's there. This is why why Floyd Mayweather left top rank and now and he went over to, to, to PBC or you know joined with Al Heyman. You know what I mean? These fighters, they follow Al Heyman's blueprint. And I mean, look, all of the big fights that can be made for both of these fight for any of these fighters in boxing is on the PBC side. Most of these fights. So everybody else seems to be on the outside looking in. Terrence Crawford, Demetrius Andr Andrade, Golovkin, you know what I'm saying? All of these other fighters, uh, Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that I agree with it or anything like that. I think that these fighters need to just come together and make these fights happen, man. But, I mean, Al Heyman, is, he's spanking them. He's like, oh, he's putting a monopoly on it, bro. Oh, you don't want to do, you don't want to be with me? It is what it is. You're going to suffer over there, wherever you at. So eventually, people, either you're going to have to come to Al Heyman or we just ain't going to see these fights. Or the fighters are going to get, you know, that, that fight, that money going to be right. Or we just won't see the fights. It sucks for us, but I understand. You know what I mean? But anyway, Eddie Hearn, man, shout out to him. I mean, you know, if that shit was real... You know, it, was, it seemed like he said it was an Instagram DM or an email or something like that. I don't know how valid that is. You know, paper contracts on the on the table is what it is. That's what we're looking for. But I mean, that'll do. That'll do just fine. That email, that'll do just fine. Because um, he he said Eddie Hearn himself said that he does not uh 
Jamal Charlo did not turn down that offer. You know, Jamal Charlo acknowledged that he got the offer via the email. Uh, he acknowledged that he got the offer. He never denied the offer. He never confirmed the offer. But he's saying that the, the PBC representatives, whoever they may be, I'm assuming Al Heyman, whoever, I don't know, um, that they basically, they're the ones saying that, oh, we never got any, we never got any email. And then you have right there, man, Eddie Hearn showing proof. So if you know me, man, I don't really rock with promoters too much. I don't care about boxing promoters. They're all snakes and scumbags. You know what I mean? Uh, every single one of them and they're liars. But hey, when, when real shit happens, real is real and it just is what it is. So that's my thoughts on it, man. You see it right there, man. Proof for yourself. So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below, man. Please, man, feel free to call up. I'll be doing a live uh, tomorrow. Well, I don't know what time. I'm not going to give that information out right now. But uh, leave your comments below. Let me know what y'all think, man. It's your boy, Bro Talk 1000 and I'm out. Peace.